SRAM has two brand new drivetrains, and yes, they are the mechanical transmission you have been waiting for. That means cables, but it does mean no adjustment screws and no mech hanger. I've got a SRAM Eagle 90 group set here, but there is also the SRAM Eagle 70 group set. The 70 is for OEMs largely. That means it's the group sets you're gonna see on those cheaper bikes. The SRAM 90 group set is the one that you will be going to the shops and buying if you wanna keep cables on your bike. I've got a group set here. I'm gonna be unboxing it. I've never seen it in the flesh before. And later on, Rob Weaver is gonna bring you his first ride impressions. He's been riding SRAM Eagle 90 for a few weeks. Okay, guys, so this is the box that it all comes in, nicely branded, as always, from SRAM, um, but we're going to have a little look inside here. I have not had a look at this yet, so let's pull it open. This is the SRAM Eagle 90, so that's slightly higher-end group set. Okay, classic stuff. Obviously, we've got the chain. We've got a crank arm here, and probably the most important thing, or the most interesting thing to start with, is the derailleur. Now, as you can see, this is one of those direct mount type derailleurs. That means that it bolts straight onto the frame, no derailleur hanger, but your frame must use the UDH, Universal Derailleur Hanger Standard, because that is where this bolts onto. I guess in many ways it's quite similar to the electronic ones, isn't it? Look, it's a, a similar shape. You've got quite a similar looking cage down here with the, the big jockey wheels on there to help sort of reduce friction in the drivetrain and uh, the, the main bolt that goes through the frame here. There is clearly no motor on there. There are no batteries in there, but what there is, is the, uh, the cable stops for you to run a mechanical cable through there. Now, as mentioned, it does bolt straight onto the frame using their full mount standard. This is like a very heavily defined placement of the dropout and the cassette. And what this means is that there are actually no adjustment screws on there. This will be the first mechanical group set with no B-tension and no high and low adjust, which should, in theory, make it quite easy to set up. So SRAM tell us it's actually got a very similar set of process to the electronic drivetrains or the electronic transmission drivetrains that they've bought out last, over the last couple of years. The only additional part is that you have to feed a cable through it uh, and get the cable tension right. And that's the final step in the setup process. In the knuckle, you have the same type four damper. So that's the sort of the clutch system in there. And that's the same one that you find on the electric derailleurs. Now the Eagle 70 version has a slightly cheaper drag spring in there just to keep the whole derailleur a little bit cheaper. If you look down the mech, you will see that the, uh, the derailleur cage is a little bit bent, but it is meant to be bent. And that is the same thing that again, you'll find on transmission. In fact, SRAM said that this is the most rebuildable derailleur on the market, pretty much. Pretty much everything on this can be replaced including obviously the cage, the jockey wheels, some of these parallelograms. Now what's interesting is that a lot of them are also cross compatible or cross changeable with the electronic derailleurs that you may also have seen. So if you've got a transmission group set on your bike and you bust it up, maybe this could be a little cheaper way of fixing it up in the long run. Now one little feature on this that I saw that I quite liked was the addition of the roller jig. And obviously this was something that previous SRAM mechanical derailleurs had. Now, I don't know if you remember a long time ago, there's a thing called the Avid Roller Jig. It was a little add-on that you'd put between the derailleur and your outer cable routing uh, to make the kink in the cable a little bit less severe when it was going into mech. It was basically a little roller for the cable to go around. I know that they had this on previous uh, SRAM mechanical drivetrains that were more recently released, but it's quite nice to see the little Roller Jig left still in there. Kind of cool. Now, as you may know, on electronic transmission group sets, the setup process uh, has a few steps on it that are different to a, a normal mechanical drivetrain. Uh, this one still has the same little button here, so you can bend this out and you've got your setup position. And when you're getting your wheel in and out, uh, uh, you can obviously uh, trap your finger, trap your finger <laughs> or press it in so you've got a full lock on there. Classic SRAM stuff. We really like it here. Um, that's really nice to see. <laughs> Don't do that, please. <laughs> All right, next up are the cranks. Now, it's a pretty standard forged aluminium crank here. Uh, it uses the dub wide standard for, I think it's a 55 millimeter chain line. Uh, and of course, the standard little uh, plastic tightener thing on there that you will have seen on a lot of SRAM crank sets in the past. Um, on the back of the 90, you've got the eight bolt uh, chain ring mount standard on there. This means that there are plenty of options when this does run out. This is a steel, a stamped steel chainring. From the off, you get 30 up to 34 tooth options. 
Um, however, you can fit a 36 or a 38 from some of the more expensive SRAM drivetrains because they use the same mounting standard. And if you really want to, you can also mount uh, an eight bolt power meter from Quark from SRAM um, onto these cranks if you really want to. Um, aftermarket, they will come with a double bash. So when your cranks are in the forward or back position, you've always got a little bit of protection for those chain rings if you're going over a log or a rock. Um, you can remove them as well. Um, and then if you're getting this on a bike, it'll come with either none, one or two bash guards. But the options there, uh, you can bottom on and off so you can sort of have it to see what you like. Now, if you have the Eagle 70 cranks, it uses a three bot mounting standard. So there are sort of slightly different options out there, but you can also get bash guards on that as well. Again, two will come in the box, one, two or zero will come on bikes. Now, when I was looking at the press release about the, the new cranks, something really jumped out. There are so many different crank arm length options available with this crank. I'm gonna go from the top. Okay, so the 90 standard drivetrain crank has options from 155 up to 175 millimeters in length. So there's 155, 160, 165, 170, 175, so five different lengths. There is an e-bike option for the SRAM Eagle 90 crank as well. And this comes with 150 up to 170 mil length. So five mil shorter range, but down to 150 mil. Um, and that crank is compatible with Bros, with SRAM Proud Chain, with Bosch, and with Isis mounted cranks. So quite a bit of compatibility there. The Eagle 90 cranks, they come in a slightly narrow width, 165, 170, 175. And then the Eagle 70 e-bike crank comes in 160, 165, and 170 mil length. So a, again, a narrower range. So that's the cranks. Let's have a look at the shifter, the business end of the group set. Okay, so this is the new shifter. It looks really slimline. I think they sort of used the stealth brake lever thing as like a design inspiration here because it's really nice and low profile. There's an aluminium lever on there, pulls it through, and it does of course use the MMX clamps to attach to your brake levers. More on that in a minute. Um, the design of this is designed apparently to get the cable coming out more parallel to the handlebars. We've seen that a lot recently. SRAM and Shimano, for example, have both changed up their brakes to have the hoses running along the bars. Gives a slightly tidy look. It means that if you've got more integration on there, especially with e-bikes, it's a bit easier to get those hoses rooted into the frame a bit cleaner. Um, so yeah, so this has obviously a multiple click, two on there. However, there is an e-bike version which will only do a single click. And that is because it prevents you sort of overshifting when you're putting a lot of power through the crank so you don't snap your chain. Um, so if you buy the e-bike version, it will only do a single click at a time instead of the double uh, with the standard mechanical. So one of the things when this was all announced I wondered about was about cross compatibility or backwards compatibility because obviously SRAM have got loads of shifters from history. Unfortunately, the cable pull for this shifter is different from, I guess, the current or the previous generation uh, mechanical shifters. So there's no backwards compatibility if you are running SRAM mechanical with the new full mount derailleur. Um, the other thing that you can't do with this uh, that you can do with electronic stuff is run it on your gravel bike. So a lot of people on gravel are running the, it's kind of a mullet setup they call them gravel, where they're running the, the T-type or transmission electronic derailleurs with their electric shifters because Bluetooth doesn't have a cable pull. Um, but this does, and it's not compatible with drop bar levers. Okay, so this is probably a useful time to just very briefly touch on the fact that SRAM have got a whole new lineup of brakes. I am not going to talk about it in this video because there is just way too much going on with a new group set as well as new brakes. However, going forward, all SRAM brakes will use mineral fluid and there will be a lot of happy people out there. But they're also shrinking down the range a little bit. And now my understanding is they're going to be Motive, Maven, DB8, DB6 and DB4 in the future. So that's kind of what's happening. That's been announced today. And of course, if you want all the lowdown on that, head to bikerider.com because we've got a full news story on those. Okay, so we've got the derailleur, we've got the cranks, uh, and we've got the shifter now. Pretty much the last things in the package are of course the cassette and chain. Now, if you're gonna go and buy a SRAM Eagle 90 group set, you're actually gonna get a GX level chain and cassette. So it's actually very much the same as it was before. In fact, this one's even branded GX. So there's no surprises here, 10 to 52. Uh, it's got your little setup cog mount marking on there. Um, and it goes straight onto the um, free hub body, your XD driver, and you can tighten it up. 
There isn't anything particularly special there. A nickel coated cassette. It is what it is. If though you are getting the Eagle 70 group sets, whether that's on a full bike or if you are buying those components individually, there is a specific Eagle 70 cassette. Now that is a 12 speed cassette, 10 to 52, much the same as this one, but it mounts onto your standard spline free hub. So it doesn't need an XD driver. It just needs a normal, I guess, HG driver. Sorry to use Shimano terminology in a strong video. Um, but that's really interesting because there aren't many cassettes out there that go onto that spline free hub that are 10 to 52. Also, it'll be coming two parts. So gears eight to 12, again, replaceable when you wear those out. So that's kind of pretty cool. It's likely to be quite a bit heavier. Um, but in order for SRAM to get the shifting that they want from transmission, because obviously their big thing is that the shifting with transmission is incredible, right? You've got the cassette with all the shifting ramps and the, the different profiles on the teeth to make sure that when you're shifting under power, the chain is really easily jumping between them. Again, there's profiling within the chain to help those match together and merge. In addition, of course, the whole point of this is that this is really stiff and should shift really well. The whole point of this transmission is to give you electronic levels of shift performance with a mechanical setup at obviously a cheaper price. In a second, Rob's gonna tell you how good it is to ride or not. Um, but first, I'm gonna go and weigh all of these components and I'm gonna put a table on screen with the weights of all the different components from SRAM Eagle 90, along with SRAM GX Eagle transmission and Shimano XT. Now the pricing of XT and this are fairly similar and obviously the electronic group set is quite a bit more expensive, um, but the weights might surprise you. Feel free to hit pause if you wanna have a proper look at those. Okay then Rob, so you've had uh, Eagle 90 on your Specialized Epic for what, about a month or two? 250k you say? How's it going? Yeah, so about a month um, and I've managed to clock up about 250 kilometers so far. Um, what I would say first off, we'll start with a shifter feel. So nice and positive. There's definitely a bit more to uh, push through. It's a bit of a softer feel than maybe Shimano when you're shifting up the block into an easier gear. But I would say the release uh, on the thumb paddle is quicker and there's, there's less travel compared to a Shimano shifter. So I, I actually like that more. Um, now, when it comes to the shift itself, you do have to bear in mind that it is a cable, so there will be a bit of stretch. So over time, you do need to ensure you're tweaking the tension of that until things settle down. Uh, I actually went through that and I had a few issues with the third gear, for only for a little while. And once I'd added, added a bit of tension, things definitely smoothed out. And so now things are nice and accurate. Um, but the best thing for me is without a doubt, shifting under power. So this thing, just like the, uh, electronic version when you're really cranking it whether that's sprinting or up a steep hill you can just keep punching through the gears it will keep going most of the time it sounds totally fine <laughs> obviously you will get a bit of crunch here and there but um I've zero problems with doing that so far which is brilliant and then there's the noise uh, or lack of so it's actually really nice and quiet while you're riding which is fantastic and it's tough too and the fact that you can replace the well sorry you can rebuild the mech rather than have to replace it I think is a really nice touch. What does the uh, big thumb lever feel like when you're pushing it through? Is it sort of got that sort of sturdiness that we've come to see from like Shimano's SLX and XT? I would say maybe it's um, not quite as positive as theirs and the click isn't as pronounced, but there's, it's still, you know, it's still a nice feel to it. And as soon as you start to push it, you can see the Dralian move. So it's, it's nothing's wasted really when you're doing that. There's just maybe a bit more of a slightly softer touch to it but you still get a nice positive click okay. but like i said with the with the release paddle so when you're shifting into a harder gear there's less travel on the lever so you can really punch down through them really fast which is nice obviously with the electronic transmission there's sometimes a little bit of a delay between hitting the button and the uh, the gear actually shifting but with a mechanical one it's going to shift exactly when it wants to how is that you say the shifting under power is really good does it ever sort of like chatter like shimano can do when you're shifting up the gears um as in like that rumbling sort yeah. of Yeah. No, so far it's been fairly crisp in that sense. You know, each shift is positive. Obviously it still has the shifter ramps on the cassette. So there, there is that, but um, timing wise, it feels nice and easy and, and, and fairly sort of positive, I'd say. And what about the clutch? It's the type four clutch in there. So has it been a quiet ride when you're rattling over bumps or is there a bit of chain slap going on? Is it easy? So, it's, I mean, obviously it's hard to say because on the, the bike I'm on, on the Specialized Epic 8, there's a lot of chainstay protection. So obviously that damps that down quite a bit, 
but um, so far, yeah, nice and quiet. And considering this only has, what, 120 mm travel, when you're kind of bouncing through stuff, you'd expect it to be quite loud because it doesn't have that much travel. But the reality is it's nice and quiet. And I guess in terms of longevity, the Eagle 90's got a steel stamp chain ring. It's got the same cassette as GX and the same chain as GX, so we'd expect it to last a long time? I'd hope so, yeah. Yeah, only time will tell though, right? Lovely stuff. And okay, um, any sort of wrapping up, what do you think? Good, bad or indifferent? I like the fact that SRAM have gone, despite the fact they've got so many wireless groups out there on the market now, they're still investing in mechanical shifting. Okay, that's Rob's first ride review of the new SRAM Eagle 90. Now, of course, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you've got any questions about the new group set, drop them in the comments below. And head to bikeradar.com because there's full sets of articles on there with all the details you need to know about the group sets. And, of course, on the new brakes that are also being uh, announced at the moment from SRAM. If you've enjoyed this video, stick around because we've also got a trail hacks how to fix dodgy shifting with transmission by the side of the trail. It's really easy and it is here. <laughs>